That was a little freaky. My lights started popping and making crackling noises. I don't know what happened because when I've originally done this, I did not have this issue. So this is a major red flag then. I'm gonna try this one more time. Hopefully I don't fry my house. Oh shoot, no way. These lights just got fried. No joke guys, I have been seriously impressed by these M2000 units from eTaker. Now they did send these out to me. There has been no discussion of what I'm allowed to say, what I'm not allowed to say, nothing. That's not what I do in my videos, just full honest reviews. And these have actually impressed me. What I'm so impressed about this unit right here, obviously I have two of these M2000s, is the fact that each one of them has a 2000 watt hour battery with a 2000 watt inverter. So I always love to see a match between the battery and inverter capacity. But even more than that is this adapter right here. Even with these two tiny units, I'm able to get 120 slash 240 volt split phase power out of these two units right here. And basically what that means is I can connect this to run all of the circuits in my house. With these two connected, I can get 4,000 watts of AC output, or basically just your normal wall outlet power. The advantage of having two units is that I don't have to run extension cords all throughout my house. So even if I'm not planning on running the entire house, including things like the air conditioner or 240 volt appliances, I can still run all of the outlets in my house. This makes life so much easier when I can go directly into this L1430R receptacle. This is the 240 volt connection. And then I plug it directly into this outlet right here. To make that possible, I simply keep this L1430 extension cable here in my garage so that I can bring any 240 volt system here into my garage. I use this L1430P to SS250R adapter that I just bought on Amazon. And all I have to do is connect this like so directly into this inlet. And now this will go to my electrical panel. And then by turning off this grid connection here and moving up this metal plate, I can turn on this breaker, which feeds my entire electrical panel. Now, because I only have 4,000 watts of output, I could turn things off like this, which goes to my electric dryer. That way I don't overload the system. I can basically transform my entire main electrical panel into a critical loads panel by simply turning off the areas that I don't wanna run. But in my case, I have a sub panel here on this 100 amp breaker. This runs my well pump, so I wanna keep this on so that way I have fresh water to my house all the time. Now, carrying both of these at once is possible because these are so lightweight. So if I don't have really high demand 240 volt power, say I'm just running a well pump, then this is gonna be a really good option. Now this splitter plugs in directly in the back very easily. I forgot, but I usually run these cables underneath this handle so that way the 240 volt combiner sits flush on top of the top unit. So the top unit is connected to the left side and the bottom unit is connected to the right side. In order to get this operational, all I have to do is turn on the AC power of both of these and then this little light will kick on. So I'm gonna plug in my 240 volt right here. This is live and then I'm already plugged in over here. Okay, I don't, I believe that got caught on camera. I've not had this issue before with testing these units but it did not run power to my whole house. That was a little freaky. My lights started popping and making crackling noises. I don't know what happened because when I've originally done this, I did not have this issue. So this is a major red flag then. That was not cool. I am getting 240 volts here at 60 Hertz. I'm not sure what would cause the problem with all of that. I'm gonna try this one more time. Hopefully I don't fry my house. See if this works. I don't know what's going on with that, but basically the lights will work for a couple of seconds and then we just lose power to the whole house again. So this apparently is not able to sustain 240 volt power to a house and we don't have any big loads right now. We don't have the well pump on, we're not running an air conditioner nor a heater, nothing. We're basically just running refrigeration, lights, basic things, Wi-Fi, nothing that should be tripping this at all. I'm gonna do it one more time, but I wanna see what's going on on the screen here as we attempt this. I don't understand why this is doing it. I've run the 240 off of this without a problem before. Okay, turning off grid in three, two, one. Turning on M2000 in three, two, one. Everything's on. And now lights are flickering. It's really not able to keep up. 
back on grid. Oh shoot, no way. These lights just got fried. So here where my breaker panel is in my laundry room, turning the light switch on and off, and this is not working. These lights have officially been fried. I've not had any issues with it in the past. Look, my microwave, it's dead. No power at all to it. My TV is not working, nor is this fireplace. I've ripped this all apart now, but it turns out that it was a surge protector here that got fried and the breakers tripped. And fortunately, this is now working in my laundry room are for sure dead. Uh, luckily, my laundry machines still work. Here's the top unit. See that it's turned on, AC output is on. When I plug something in, makes that clicking noise. Sounds like a clock. This unit is working all right. I've got a 1500 watt load on it. No issues at all. So I think it was this unit that failed for some reason. So I'm glad I continued to test this. That's what I do with all of these units, but I did not expect this to happen. I do not recommend this unit. I would not buy it. I don't know if it's dirty power or something coming out of it, but uh, it definitely was causing major issues here and obviously fried some of my light bulbs. I would not trust it in order to run anything else in my house. Originally I ran my well pump, I ran my lights, my Wi-Fi, fans, anything that I would need in an emergency just for basic necessities and had no issues at all. Each one of these units can do a thousand watts of solar input. It's a little bit tricky to get the max solar input because the top voltage rating of the M2000 is 60 volts. It really frustrates me when companies don't do at least 65 volts on their MPPTs because most 200 watt and 100 watt panels, once you've put three of them together in series, you're gonna be around 63 or 64 volts. And so you basically cannot get more than 400 watts connected in a single group. And then this does go up to 20 amps of solar input. So you could put two 400 watt panels together or four 200 watt panels together, two in two groups. But in the end, I was never able to get the full 1000 watts of solar input, but I was able to get about 800 watts of solar input pretty consistently. I was excited to show you a very portable option that I've been testing for a while. And this absolutely just lost all faith from me. I do not recommend it. I would not get it, even if it's a really good deal. That's really unfortunate. With just how small and easy this was to use, I really liked it, especially for the fact that I could do the 240 to connect to the whole house, not to run heavy loads, but just to have life comfortable. If you wanna see the units that I do recommend, you can watch this video up here or go to my website, poweredportablesolar.com. You can also email me at info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'll help you find the system. So definitely take a look at that or the Apollos or any other system. I just definitely wouldn't go with this. Be prepared, guys. See you on the next one.